Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be trying to attempt to repair this Sonos 3 speaker. Um, so basically this is a speaker from the uh, gym that I go to. They've been pumping music very loudly through this for, for quite a many years. And upon inspection, there was hairline cracks all along, uh, all along the speaker surround over here. And, you know, basically here's another one that I already started working on. So I patched it up with some rubber cement and I just gave it a play and it got louder before it started to distort, but it was still distorting. So my guess is that, uh, this is a little bit off kilter now with the, I mean, I didn't do that, um, you know, perfect of a job kind of sort of expecting that we'd have to replace the speakers anyway. But the fun thing about replacing the speakers is that there really isn't anything, you know, Saint Sonos approved as far as speakers go. There's no replacement parts. They really kind of uh, encourage you not to go this route at all. So I found this somewhat equivalent. It's a four ohm speaker on Amazon. It looks similar, but the biggest difference is the depth. So if I sort of look this way, you're going to notice that there's a little bit of a consideration now for how deep this thing sits in. And if I was to just drop it directly in, you see the circuit board in there, it will touch the circuit board. So my approach on this one is going to be raising, basically building in an adapter plate here. Oh, and oh, by the way, these screws don't really line up much. So I would have to get creative. Even if it did fit, there would still have to be some creativity to get this to work like that. Um, but I, So what I am going to have to do is basically take, I'm hoping, just a quarter inch of uh, plywood and being able to just stack it in there, make an adapter out of that, seal it up real nice. Because this whole unit is kind of neat. I was kind of reverse engineering how it works. There's a woofer cone in the back. Um, for the low end, but there's nothing attached to it, like a voice coil or anything. And my expectation, or my, sort of what my thought was, is that they sealed this whole unit up, and the airflow from these speakers, these two speakers, is actually driving the inside air for that uh, kind of 180-degree <laughs> phase. But that sub-phase in the back, which is kind of cool, that gives you that low end without actually creating anything, but there is a speaker in there. So anyway... Um, what I'm going to do first is start with a template. Uh, this corner here, I'm going to take my Dremel, and I'm going to just route out a little nick here so this can sit as flat as it can so I can get my depth on how big that adapter plate needs to be because um, you see it doesn't quite fit. So I'm going to do that first. All right, I've done some measuring, and the cone of this, or sorry, the surround. This speaker is about two and a quarter, where this hole is, with the new speaker, exactly three inches. And then the width total here is about three and a quarter. All right, so what I'm going to have to do is I got my scrap over here, and I got my circle hole, um, I don't know what you want to call that, uh, sort of guide for doing, and it's a calibrated circle hole that I use with my speakers and things. This was a scrap uh, back to a speaker cabinet that I was building, uh, but I used this tool to cut that perfect hole, and I'm going to use this tool again because it has three inches on here. So what I'm going to do is measure the flat side over here, take a table saw, and drill a hole. Um, actually, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole exactly at you know center of three inches so that's one and a half one and a half draw a hole or drill a hole and then i'm going to route out a circle using this at the three inch mark i'm going to do that same thing over here so now i take my scrap piece of wood that's doing nothing and take making it useful um then with my table saw i'll round off you know make perfect three inch uh or whatever three and a quarter inch sides so uh, i'm just going to put the camera down and go for it all right, so I measured uh, three and a quarter for the hole, or the square, basically, and then the center of that hole is half, right? So 1.625 is half of three and a quarter. 
I measured up, and then you know I made two points and I drew a straight line. Did that on both sides, and I'm gonna basically uh, drill a hole. So basically, the pilot hole for the guide for the three hole, three inch hole. All right, drilled a one eighth inch hole, and then I dropped the peg. And that peg, here comes the fun part. We have to drop it in the three inch. So you see where it meets right there. We gotta drop it in that three inch hole. So I'm gonna take the camera out of my hand and line that up. All right, see how the peg is now in the three inch hole? And now we're gonna turn on the router and give it a spin, literally. Now we have a perfect three inch hole, minus a quarter of an inch, obviously, because that's the size of the, tri uh, the router bit. All right, got my table saw out. And what I did was I measured two and a quarter up here and scored it using a really fine uh, point. So now when I'm getting my gauge, like this I'm basically lining up the outer edge so the left side of the blade to match and then I can rip this part through at least that's my thought we'll see how it goes alright now I ripped and now I just need to make three and a quarters this way then I'll have my beginning of the adapter plate all right, now we have our adapter plates. Not too bad. All right, so far so good. One thing I forgot is that there's these little angles. So see right there? So I'm gonna have to uh, notch them out, probably with a Dremel. Since the speaker, the original speaker, is over uh, smaller than the new hole, uh, I was able to drop it in and score the outsides here about how much I need to take off. All right, I uh, dremeled, you could see the burn marks uh, off the corners and it's got a really nice tight fit now. Almost too tight because it gets like, stuck even though there's no glue or anything. So what I'm gonna do now is basically take this as a template drill a hole and then countersink and you reuse the screw holes here to mount to the original I'll bet I'll seal this whole thing up with hot glue uh, so that's a nice foundation for the new speakers to go in it's on and drill into the adapter plate I have the uh, basically the holes pre-drilled out for the uh, mounting this to the original speaker location. So what I did was I took the original speaker and then I marked out where it should be. And then I used this uh, countersink wood drill bit. And I'll put the link in my uh, description below for where you can buy that on Amazon. And then I drilled. I got a little too crazy with it. So you only need to basically go as deep to cover or at least, you know, to countersink that screw. So this is the original screw that is going to be used to mount basically this to that, all four corners, and that's got the original. So if you look inside, there's um, additional support for the plastic, basically, or for the original screw mounts. So I'm just going to touch that a little bit. Because I'm going to hot glue this whole fixture down, I'm not going to need a crazy amount of threads touching and then after that I'll put in the new speaker and you know get an idea of where I need to drill into there make those holes because see how they're a little shorter um, and then uh, you know then we'll find screws and screw it down accordingly
All right. So my hot glue actually <clears throat> um, started to dry quicker, and it created a gap between the seal here. So now I'm going to switch over, and I have uh, Ultra Black RTV Gasket Maker. I like this stuff because, A, it's black, uh, and, B, it's safe for electronics. Um, some silicone will actually start eating away the electronics on the inside as it cures, so the off-gas of that. This will not, and I'm going to be using it. All right, it looks like my plan has changed a few times. So I've started to go down the road of having these holes kind of line up, you know, square how they were. But then, you know, it looks like you can see a little bit of the screw, and you can. So what I ended up doing, and it doesn't seem to have a downside yet, is I rotated the speaker just a little bit. So now I have nice, flush... I'm doing a really bad job right now of demonstrating it because it has to fit nicely in the hole. Um, there we go. But, so I rotated it just slightly. So now it has a nice flush and it's not extended. There's not, no real downside and I'm getting more of a bite or no, more um, flat surface area to go up against. So I'm actually going to connect the speakers now and um, put a little gasket on the inside and tighten this down. And I think we might have a first listen with the new speakers. Hopefully it works because everything's going to be glued down. Maybe I'll uh, connect it first without gluing it. Yeah, I'll do that. Speakers are temporarily uh, locked down. And I'm going to give this a test before I seal up the, the insides with gasket maker. All right, it works. So I could absolutely feel some air coming through. So I'm going to uh, gasket this up, do a little touch-up paint work here, and get ready to, to seal it up.
All right. It took 24 hours for all the silicone to dry, and I just gave it a good test. I don't want to get any copyright uh, infringements on my account, so I'm not going to show the speakers in action, but they definitely work. I'm very happy with how things turned out. Um, it sounds great. It sounds just as good as it was to begin with. It may not be the most pretty, but guess what? Once we put that faceplate back on, we're good to roll. Rock and roll. Thanks for watching. If you're new, welcome. And if you've been a fan of my uh, amp building stuff and speakers building stuff, hello again. Hope to see you guys both around soon. See ya.